I am so happy to be here right now with Jay Prince on the Nang Selection. If you've just joined us, it's all right. It's better to be late than never. Man is going to zone out to this one. Hey, I'm just trying. You know what's mad? Listening back to that song made me lose my breath equally as much as I did last night for the launch of it. <laughs> hey, how was it for you? For me, it was sick, man. Um, good experience. Uh, definitely one of my favorite shows for sure. And... Um, yeah, man, the energy was just right. The energy was great. And it just felt good, like, finally, like, performing some music that you've been working on for a long time. And then, it, especially before the tape comes out, and then f for the tape to come out following, it's just a, you know, it's an experience that, you know, it's like once in a lifetime kind of kind of vibe. Okay, for the listeners that have just joined us and don't know who you are, this is Jay Prince yeah. from Cannon Town, 23. Yeah. Um, Congo descent. Tongo Angolan, yeah. Tongo Angolan descent. Yeah. Um, you got nice hair. You got you got the dreads going on. Um, you got you got smile. You got that smile. Ironically, yeah. your tape's called Smile. <laughs> uh, if you if you're if you're from, if you're new to Nang Selection as well, Jay's been on the show what two three times yeah, already now. So this is time. this is a, this is a casual catch up between veggies and that. I'm just trying to get you get everyone to listen. <laughs> just true. smile good. Um, yeah. How was the process creating it? Because obviously I've seen you sweat and yeah. put your heart into it but for those who don't know how was it for you um it was so you know what man it was probably my most the most fun i've had like making the record like making this project past projects has been kind of like tense because of school and obviously like other priorities mainly it being you know trying to get a degree mm -hmm. so this time around it was really like my first time not having uni to worry about not really having other things that kind of got in the way got closer with my friends this time around so you know i got everyone involved as everyone involved as much as I could, you know, whether it be playing music for friends, playing music for you and what, what not, or even just rehearsing. So, like, the process was cool, man. It was fun. Obviously, there was, like, ups and downs, but, like, all in all, it was it was fun, you know, milking on a mixtape. It's, it's, it's fun, man. It's, it's, it's better than working on them kind of serious projects. Well, but this came across, I hope this came across as honest as possible. All right. I hear that. I know you're being very PC with it because there's a lot of things behind the scenes that, obviously, I'm not going to say. <laughs> But before we get into the downs, if you want to get into it, last night, yeah, Red Bull Music Academy tour, we mm -hmm. were in Macbeth. We had AOA Inc., I Am Nobody, um, Kieran Kai, mm -hmm. JD Reed, mm -hmm. obviously us two. Mm -hmm. um, how how was the whole day for you in general? Because obviously I was joking with you on the day, yeah. like, right, there's man out here with cameras for yeah, you. Right. That's I will never get used to that. That's one thing I'll never get used to. I was like, man, just kill me now, man. Like. Don't get me wrong, I love Red Bull, man. Everything they've done, supporting, everything was amazing, man. Like, they really, like, put in the shift to really push my project and get me exposed and help me with a live show and everything. I think the cameras was just something I got, was getting used to. They asked me if I wanted to do, like, a day in the life kind of thing. Mm -hmm. At first, I was like, yeah, let's do it. Like, that's a mad idea. Let's do it. And then you clocked it. it was then a I'm lot like, of stuff. shit, like, <laughs> oh, like, I had this cameras actually following me. And obviously, me, I'm a low key kind of guy. So this is like a big red camera following you around Shoreditch mm. in East London, where most people might even know you. It's a bit, it's a bit much, but, um, it was all for the content and all for the, all part of the process. And I know when I see it, I'm going to be like, jeez, this is sick, man. Obviously, right. like, in the process of it, even having to think about your live show, like, in the evening and then having to do rehearsal, it's all like you have mixed emotions. I think that's where it, that's where it all pretty much stemmed from yesterday. It was a very hectic day because I, usually before a show, I'm usually at home until sound check. But I was up, like, at, in the morning, then had to go run and do this stuff. And then went to the Dizzy Rascal lecture we both went to, yeah. which was amazing. And then after that, that's already that's already like another moment that like you're already guessing about. Then you have to go and do a live show. <laughs> <laughs> then you, so it's a bit mad, you know what I'm talking about. So like, yeah, it was a bit of a tense day yesterday, but um, it was just the best. It was one of the best days ever, to be honest, man. So. It sounds like you're definitely a hustler. Sounds like you're out here grinding. Have to, um, what, what would you say it takes to be J Prince? Obviously, you can't make a second J Prince, but like you said, you woke up at what seven a.m. You had to do all these press runs, and we did rehearsals. We bang out, yeah. we bang oh, out rehearsals. Oh my days! Yo, and then we had to do the show, and it's long as well. Rehearsals, it's, it's, it's a long process. People don't see when you're performing. What, what goes into being J Prince? What goes in your head, fam? Oh man, to be honest, man, I just like to be. I don't know. Like, I don't know what it takes to be J Prince, but for me, what keeps me like me. I feel like I just discipline, man. Like I, I, I try to be as disciplined as possible in everything I do, whether it me be going for runs in the morning, whether it me be in the studios, <laughs> whether we're at rehearsals, even if I'm a bit late. But I try to be as disciplined as possible in everything I do. You know, sometimes you kind of got to lead by example. All right, all right. <laughs> Obviously, you heard me laugh, but people don't know why I'm laughing. You know why I'm laughing. Of 
Hey, you see, your Snapchat game yeah. is on a different... I thought Khaled was on it. Yeah. I thought Diddy was on it. Yeah. See you, yeah? You bring out the iPhone. You always you got witnessed the, it as well. <laughs> you witnessed it. Always got the right angle with the... Yeah. Yeah, to be on it, fam. It's, it's true, but like, even... You already know, I've obviously, we've gone on tour together and stuff, so, like, even in the hotel the other day, like... The gym. I'm like, cool, let's quick go to the session. gym. Like, let's get a quick session in Come before on. we go on stage, before we go to sound check. So, like, I'm always trying to be disciplined. I'm always trying to let people know that, you know... Just keep, you gotta keep pushing, grinding in whatever whatever area of work you do, man. Whether it's health, whether it's you know working in a school, working in a store, working on music, whatever. Like you kind of have to just have that drive in life, man. So that's where it kind of all stems from. Do you do? You, are you still at that stage where you get gassed when people say you've lost weight? I'm still gassed because it's a progression. You know what I mean? Because like me, I don't really see it as much. I see like a little bit of progress, but when you see other people. Like, you know, like, oh, man, you've lost weight. You Friends from good. years ago. Like, oh, actually, Jay, man. So I'm like, raw, man, what? So you, you didn't want to tell man was fat, but you want to tell me I lost <laughs> weight. You know what I mean? Like, you didn't want to say nothing when man was a bit bigums. But um, nah, <laughs> <laughs> nah, but like, it's nah, it's good. It just, it's like, a, it's, it's motivation, you know? All in all, it's just motivation to just keep you going. So, yeah, man. Sick life. Well, smile good drop today. Yeah, man. Um, What song do you want to get into it? Um, we, So you already played Father, Father. Well, now, that's the Gassums. You know what, man? Um, Let's play, Um, let's play, you know what? Let's just play the beginning. Let's play the let's play let's play the beginning. Let people know. And why why the beginning? How, how, what was the process behind the beginning? Like who made it? Like oh, how so long yeah, did it, it was, take? It was one of my friends called Jonah Christian. I actually met him in LA. Uh, we really got to chop it up. He works for Beats One as well. So he, we, we we got to chop it up in LA, and he played me a bunch of music. We actually made a song when I was in his house, and then after that we kind of just stayed in touch. And he sent me a bunch of bunch of music, and I was trying to work on the the, the right intro. I know what I wanted my intro to sound like. Mm -hmm. but it was just never there, and finally. I had one and then I was like, bro, this is the one. And then from then on, this kind of was created. And I only wrote it, I, I titled it the beginning because I wanted to remember it was the first song. Okay. So it ended up just staying as the beginning. So here's Sick the beginning. Life. Get into the beginning now. Let's go. Sounds mad different about the, without the solo at the end. Yeah. It still sounds sick though. Yeah, man. Do you, do you ever get bored of performing? Like, what do you prefer on a normal, like, Jay Prince day to day? Do you prefer being in the studio with X, Y, and Z or shelling down stage shows? Because that's what we do, yeah. if people didn't know. <laughs> Don't play yourself. <laughs> you said that, not me. Well, anyway, you don't agree? I, 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 yeah, I, I agree. I, 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 listen, listen, anyways, <laughs> um, I think I had a two. I, I kind of enjoy it equally, man. Like, the feeling of getting, you know, have knowing that you made a good song in the studio, it's like, you're like, oh, right, this is a vibe. And then after. Performing is a whole other energy, man. So like, I think I like both equally, but performing is like, it's like no, it's nothing. It's like nothing else, man. It's like you have the energy, you you bring your song to light, whether people have heard it or not. It's, you can kind of interpret it how you want to. Yeah. How was it creating this? Like, who did you work with on the project for Smile Good? Um. So yeah, firstly, of course, I worked with Jonah Christian, who worked on um the, the intros on the beginning and episodes. Um, Danny Seth, Michael Christmas. I worked the with. Uh, are coming. Yeah, man. I worked with uh, Mike Scribs Riley, who um, helped me produce um, Father Father and Go East. And um, what else? Um, who else did I work with on this? Maxwell, producer from. I don't want to say the wrong place. I know he's from Australia. That's why I do you know. Okay. But um, I worked with a producer called Maxwell, who worked on the last track, and I produced um, the songs as well. So with this project, it was very like. You know, it was with people I really like mess with and people that I recently met that I was like, you know, your sound is just sick and I want that could help me, you know, just make just elevate the the the, the level of sound and production. Say Nando's. Like I'm just literally I don't know if this is even professional, but I don't <laughs> care because I'm me. I'm reading your enemy feature. Jeez, which I it, haven't read by the which way. Which you haven't read. Literally, I haven't read it in full, but the first line is um were any munchkins harmed during the making of the music and i'm and i thought i was the only one to ask stupid weird questions i don't get yeah. that what was the point of that i think it was something to do with a voice pitch thing because i remember the, the the guy that interviewed me yeah i think it was to do with like a, um cause i remember when he asked that i was baffed but um i think it was to do with you know when you do voice pitch and stuff yeah i must have been i must have had a voice pitch when you, you don't know the chipmunk voice like yeah I, it must have been something to do with that on a song do you know any munchkins, like real life munchkins? No, but fact, fun, like mad fact. I don't know if you should be calling them munchkins, mun yeah. But like um, the stylist or the makeup artist that actually worked me on that shoot. Yeah. <laughs> You're <laughs> laughing already. It sounds fucked already. She was, she, it was a mad story. She was like, I was with like a midget on New Year's <laughs> Day. 
and I was like, right, this is a random story. And apparently, like, they liked each other and he ran away. It was a mad story. But they liked just, each other and he ran away. I can't remember what it was. It was just, <laughs> it was just, it, you know, that thing that just kind of throw you off when you're just there taking. You're doing the photo. You're, you're, you're trying to pose. You're trying to get your just doing your job. Foot in front of the exactly, right. Exactly. You know, just trying to be, you know, trying to be, trying to be correct. And then um, you just hear a mad story, and I'm just like, this is a bit mad because this is not the first time I'm hearing something in that kind of category. And it's not the first time you've heard some a, no, a midget I'm running asked, away. No, but like I'm saying that the, the first person asked me about munchkins and the next person talking about midgets yeah. and it's like, oh god. Did but but it was a mad vibe though. Everyone was. Well, why do people think you like short people like that? Me, no one thinks I like short people. Well, people, munchkins people, and then midgets, like midgets wasn't my story. Yeah, that but was someone they both else's said story. to you because they're telling me a story. But the first person was talking about my voice pitching. I think that's what he meant. Okay. But I guess it's a kind of awkwardly <laughs> phrased question, but at the end of the day, smile goods out, and I guess we were kind of talking <laughs> Look at about that media that. trading. Swag it right back. So, you know, Have like, you ever um like come across like awkward situations like after shows or during shows? Like, do you ever get like the bar staff? Like spiking your drink, or nah, the guys from Manchester driving down to see your show, or like, I don't know, like, uh, <laughs> do I ever get awkward? Um, Anything random that's funny? I get a lot of random ones, like, I don't know, man, like, but I guess it's, it's usually when people are kind of, you know, on alcohol or kind of intoxicated, but it's all love, man. Like, I've kind of got like the over, it's always someone showing too, too, you can't, I guess you can never show too much love, but it's like to the point where they're trying to kiss your face and stuff, and mm. it gets a bit, it, then it starts getting a bit awkward, you know what I mean? But like, that kind of happened to me last night, but I, I guess the guy was just very excited, you know what I mean? Like, did I ever tell you the story about the Encore Festival? I when know. I was, um, when me and Moz like went away, shout out Moz if he's listening, mm-hmm. me and Moz just went away, and then one girl came up to me. I was like, I love your music. Oh my day, did I miss your performance? Right. I looked at her like, like, yo, <laughs> like, I, I don't, okay. Uh, and obviously me yeah. being the, the, of the wank I am, I was like, yeah, you missed my performance. Of yeah, course, I was like, of oh, course, of course. But, um, that's sick. Have I, you ever been like mistook for someone else? Um, I don't know, man. I don't know if I've been mistaken for anybody else before, but. Um, Does anyone say you look like someone famous? No, nah, like yesterday when we were shooting, this was kind of funny, man. I was walking and there was obviously, like I said, the red camera was following me around everywhere. Mm, 6K. Don't and I'll never so. forget, there was like this old couple in the car that I was driving. And they were like, what's going on here? Oh, he's a rapper. Like straight away, like just bare judgmental, even though they were right. Yeah. But it's like so mad. What, the tone like, of the voice was, oh, he's a rapper. Like, straight away. They're in the car and then just like, he's a rapper. I'm like, rah, man. Like, like, I was kind of hurt. Like, what, what if man's a lawyer? You know, you don't know. Man could be a low key lawyer, but just by the way I looked, man said I'm a rapper straight away. Yeah. And I had this monk come up to me and ask me the same thing if I was a rapper. Huh? Oxford Circus. I was walking out. This monk guy was like, So um, we've got munchkins, midgets, and monks. Right, it was just a bit okay. mad. Like, he came up to me. He was like, Triple M. You know, people that just give out pamphlets and booklets and mm-hmm. all of that stuff. So he was like, You know, hey, bro, are you a rapper? And I was like, yeah, he goes, I knew it. I could tell by your hair. And I was like, rah, man, like, <laughs> I don't know how to feel about that. Like, obviously, like, I am, but, like, I'm more than just a rapper, you know what I mean? <laughs> but anyway, that's just me, my feelings. But um, I guess the most, along the lines of awkwardness, was when everyone thought we were brothers at Spotify. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But you did set them up. For I know. Them, I set them up, but I didn't, I didn't literally mean that we were blood brothers. But they were like, oh, that's so dope. Like, you have your brother with you performing. I'm like... Your actual brother, yeah, I'm like, like black people say, Yo, that's my bro, but obviously, like, in that setting, they've all thought, like, Hey, yeah, that was funny, though. That hey, was that same was cool. parents, <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was that was that was hilarious. I love those guys over there, so it was just funny, yeah. but um, yeah, man, if that answers your question, it didn't, but it was still entertaining. <laughs> okay, well, hey, Wicked. hey, smile good drop today. I wish what other one should we get into? Um, I think we should go into Go East, man. <laughs> oh, I like Go East, yeah, explain the premise behind Go East, shout out all the other pl- places in London, but you know. East, I don't know what accent it is, it's not a Cockney accent, but shout out East. Yeah, What's man. the story about East? The East is many, man. It's just, you know, it's where I'm from, it's where I was brought up, it's where I was taught a lot of things. I was, I went to church in South London as well, but I also went to church in East. Like, my life, everything's happened in East from whether it's love, meeting the homies, going to school, everything, you know what I mean? I went Brampton, went Barking Abbey, like, everything, I, all I know is East, you know what I mean? Not all I know, but, like, the majority of my life has been there so it was just about east man and, and this one definitely went off yesterday as well yeah man it was it was yeah it was it was a, it was, a, it was an experience see what comes out of east you know you don't play the east you know <laughs> east is very sick <laughs> hey jay what do you put on your toast uh as of late i was putting a lot of jam okay 
Do you put butter first and then jam or is straight jam? Ooh. This is always a decision I have with the man. I'm like, no, yo, what, what are you doing? At first I used to do the butter and jam, yeah. yeah. Together the combo. But I just started doing the jam after, man. So I just started doing the jam. I just feel like butter is like integral ah, in every that, piece of toast. That. It is. CFR shaking his head like, well, go on, Ralph. But you can do the jam on its own, bro. You can. I don't think you've like tried. I haven't tried, but because I've always the, gone with the, the basis tried, of then, butter first. No, I've done both, though. Okay, true. I've so, okay, both. I'll I'll try it out. I'm not first. ignorant to the other ones. I'm not like butter and jam dead, but I've done that. Fair enough. That's Do you prefer um, low top trainers or high top trainers? Mids, mids, mids. all the way. Oh, what's your best? You prefer well, mids I, then? So I have. Obviously, I had I had I had the Jays. The, the, was it the tens? I can't remember. I had that like last, got that last Christmas. All black. But ones. I don't know highs. I don't know if those are highs or mids because they don't go all the way high up. They're mids. They're mids. And when it comes to lows, always the Pumas, man. Okay. Go rock the Pumas. Come go on, rock the Clydes. Go rock the Suede. I ain't got to. What else have I got? Yeah. Actually, nah. I got the um. Like, yeah, I got some Pumas that are like this, this like knit style. They're like the high top. I went to the gym most of the time. So I got the reds and the grey ones. The Evo collection is my it's my vibe. So like, right now I'm on the Puma vibe. You feel me? What is your favorite effect to use on your voice? Favorite effect? Do you put like delay or is it like a little distortion like or the, pitch I like, bend? I like the pitch, the pitch down. When you like just mess around with your voice. Oh, is that like, where the munchkin came from? That's what I'm trying to oh, say. The vocal okay, pitch. Okay. That's why he was like, were any munchkins, munchkins killed? It was a bit of a detailed joke, you know what I mean? So obviously like... With no backstory. It, shout catching it. Shout it's like out. you have to just catch it. If you have to be there. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So like pitch bending like when I, sometimes I'll make a song you know I'm, I'm like you know I'm gonna pitch this song right down just to hear how it sound or like I might do it like in my song episodes on Smile Good the second verse I pitched it down some people think it's another feature but it's me what keyboard do you prefer to pray pray play okay um word which keyboard do I prefer to play <laughs> out, out of the two I have or you in know? life um which keyboard right have you now, touched I have like a I have a Yamaha like MX, is it MX6 or MX8? I don't know. And I've played the Motif before. I like Roland. Um, but right now, like, it's, it's in terms of Simps, I'm messing with the micro pool. But I'm, I'm, I think I'm a Yamaha guy, man. I got like the CP, I know it's the CP10, Yamaha CP10. It's like a small keyboard, limited limited launch. I think they only put it out like a couple months ago, so I, I told that. You're on, you're on this thing. Can't be, can't be playing games, man. What? <laughs> Do you know, I don't know if you want to get into this, but what artists have you shouted for a feature and it's never came through and you want to like slit their throat on a quiet one? Slit their throat? Everyone that has never got back to me. Everyone. everyone. So literally everyone. Shouts that lip. No, I'm joking. Oh, no. I just had no, a no, no, I don't want to say anyone's throat, but there's a lot of people that will never get back to you. That's just facts. Like, there's a lot of people I've hit up in the past and they got back to me. There's people that hit me up and I've probably not got back to them on, on accident, you know what I mean? Or, I swear. or probably I have got back to them and just told them the timing of it. It's just timing, you know what I mean? Everyone's busy and it depends who you hit up, like what caliber of artist. So, and who actually like messes with your music, you know mm. what I mean? So, and it all comes down to the relationship you have with people. So, like I tend to just base it off the relationship I have with people or people that I'm really like big fans of. So, but you know, obviously you want that person on your song or however, however many people. And if you don't go on it, it's, you know, just keep it moving. Out of all the projects you've done, what was, what is the one closest to your heart? Out of all the projects you've done, and don't do the cliche, ah, oh, the most recent one, because it's the most recent. Go, go, go. What if it's the most recent one? Just but don't, that, let that not be. Let that, let that not okay. be the reason. The closest to my heart. Um, it's a project that's like I say before our time, because it meant a lot to a lot of people. So obviously, like you naturally gravitate towards what means a lot to people as well. But the one that meant that's closest to me is an old, it's an oldie, oldie, oldie. It's like, I think is it's, it online still? It's, yeah, I think it is. Oh, it is online. It's Melody, I can imagine you just taking it down. Like, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I won't take it. It's the one before um, before our time. It was called Melovation. Mm -hmm. So I put that out. And now that, that kind of like kickstarted a lot of things. People don't know. Before, before our time, that was like the boost. Like, because I had Tom Mish on there. You know what I mean? Shout out to And this was Tom Mish in 2012, 2013. Do you know what I mean? So. And he, he, he produced a song and I actually jumped on one of these beats and he was like, yeah, bro, that sounds sick. And we actually did a show together with that song. I got him playing guitar like, for me on that one show. And obviously I saw him on the Spotify. Tom is killing it. So that that um helped me build the relationships and it started me off pretty well. It set me up well before I started doing Before Our Time. So my elevation is like, 
because man was working in Topshop, saving up money Fam. to do hard copies. A lot of people worked in Topshop. I didn't. Do you know what I mean? But man a lot was of people denim did. specialist. If you need your jeans, what, 28, 32? So what are you saying? What, tapered or slim or like Whatever. Straight, if, they needed, like... if they needed the um, Joni jeans, Lee jeans, Baxter jeans, man was the one. Okay. I was the plug. I, I was remember the, plug. the days. So female women jeans, I knew when girls were 28, 28 or when girls were 32, 34. Did you have the eye? Like you could just see I them and be like, yeah, you, I'd be like you. And some girls were shy to say what size they were. And I'd be like, don't worry. It's cool. We've got the backs over here. You can experiment with the leaves as well, you know, see what makes you Real comfortable. Real salesman, I hear that. The Junos were high-waisted, but the mum jeans were high-waisted too, but they weren't tight. You feel me? So, man was hustling, wow. trying to get the money up so I can um, give out, make mixtape, make the hard copies of my mixtape elevation, which I would give out for free at shows. See, that sounds like a hustler. That's what I was doing. If Topshop are listening and they want to get us into like some promo campaigns, well, I'll, yeah, let's get it. Let's I'll, get it, I'll be the guy in the background, you know. <laughs> you, you talk about <laughs> jeans, I'll just be wearing hey, them. Hey, listen, let's, let's get it, man.